Donald Trump's presidency can be defined by lies, well over 2,000 of them so far. And those lies are coming fast and furious. Well, last week alone, President Trump made 54 false claims. The last six weeks are among Trump's most dishonest as president. That's according to the Toronto Star's Daniel Dale, who has taken on one of the toughest jobs in news, counting all the president's lies. And in the face of all that lying, all that dishonesty, the president took it to a new level this week. Just remember, what you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. Well, this is a president who doesn't hesitate to tell you that what you see with your own eyes and hear with your own ears is not the truth. The sheer number of lies can be overwhelming. And the danger is that we'll become numb to all of this, that we'll tell ourselves it's just Trump being Trump. But there's a larger question here. Can the truth survive President Trump? Well, as a New York real estate developer, he built his business on his own blatant lies, claiming that Trump Tower has 68 floors when the truth is easy to see. It has 58. Claiming to be worth $100 million in 1982, when according to a Forbes reporter, his real worth was closer to $5 million. And in a lie on top of a lie, calling that reporter claiming to be a fictional Trump spokesman named John Barron. This is a man who built his campaign on lies, starting with the racist birther lie that President Barack Obama was not born in this country, a lie he reportedly still clings to in private. If he wasn't born in this country, which is a real possibility, if he doesn't, it's one of the greatest scams in the history of politics. Claiming he saw Muslims celebrating on roofs in New Jersey on 9-11. Never happened. Claiming he opposed the Iraq war from the beginning, when the fact is, his first critical comments came 18 months into the war, suggesting Ted Cruz's father was somehow involved in the JFK assassination, which is just beyond belief. And now, as president, Donald Trump is lying more and more and doubling down on his strategy of, of trying to discredit anyone who questions his lies. Well, what are all these lies doing to our democracy, to our standing in the world? Facts still matter, right? The truth still matters. So are you going to believe the man who tells you to ignore the facts, to ignore the truth? Or are you going to believe what you see with your own eyes or hear with your own ears? Good questions. So let's bring in now CNN's uh, political director, Mr. David Challion. David, thank you so much for joining us. President Trump's lies are coming fast and furious. As, as I just said before, he has made 54 claims last week, uh, false claims last week, and says that in the last six weeks, they're coming with his, that's the last 10 weeks, his most dishonest weeks as president. That's according to the Toronto Star's Washington correspondent, Daniel Dale. So the question is, why do you think, what is going on? Why is this getting worse? Well, two things are going on. One, I think the president is clearly under increasing pressure uh, from the Mueller probe, from the Michael Cohen story. And, and I, I think we're seeing that play out, that pressure, uh, time and again. But the real reason why I think you see uh, an uptick in this and no desire from the president uh, to step away from this uh, behavior is because he doesn't suffer huge repercussions for it in terms of his base of support in terms of the people that work for him and are interacting with him every day, in terms of uh, his party's uh, members of Congress who he's dealing with. There's nobody, there's no flood away from him that this is unacceptable in some way from his circle of influencers. And, and that, to me, is what gives him sort of the permission uh, to continue to do this. Yeah, no repercussions so far. I mean, but President Trump, he has been astonishingly effective, David, in getting his followers to believe him, even in the face of bullface lies. Is there any sense that things are changing and, and, and you know, as this becomes more frequent and even bolder as he does that? I, I don't see any evidence of that change, of what you're saying about uh, his supporters starting to not believe what he's saying. I, I just, I don't see any evidence of that. That's not to say there aren't uh, repercussions larger for the president, Don. I, he, he has completely lost independent voters. That was a group that was uh, actually with him in the 2016 presidential election. He won independence. They're nowhere with him now. So it, I, it's not as if uh, he hasn't had some uh, problems with the public at large, but again, his own 
information stream from his, the voters that support him, mm -hmm. from the press he takes in, from his own fellow partisans, from his staff. It doesn't seem to be that there's anyone that's saying, you know, not telling the truth to the American people mm -hmm. is a fatal flaw to a presidency. Yeah, look, I want to ask you about the, the feedback loop that is Fox News as well, because you're talking about his own, you know, what he watches on television and, and what have you. But the question is, maybe I should have asked it better before, do they do his his supporters believe him or do they just don't care or it's a combination oh. Oh, I, I think his supporters believe a lot of what they hear from him, a lot of what they hear then Fox News sort of echo and ampli amplify what he had said. Uh, when I Certainly during the campaign, when I would attend rallies and you would talk to voters, it, the, the, what they would say to you back about uh, certain stories, uh, let's say you mentioned uh, the 9-11 story or even uh, Barack Obama's uh, birthplace, uh, there are folks out there that believe certain things to be true that are proven not true. So I don't see any uh, any suggestion that some of his core supporters uh, don't believe him. But you are right to also note, I do think that even when they see something and they say, okay, that may not be, he's just shading the truth there, mm -hmm. that they're okay with that because he's giving them other things they want. He's shaking up the system. He's uh, doing well on the economy, they believe. So, so they give him a, a pass on it. Yeah. Uh, and again, the Fox feedback loop, does that contribute to this? I, there's no doubt about that. I, I, you, so you have Donald Trump say something, let's say, that is not true. Uh, let's say that his campaign was spied on, uh, uh, not true, as, as he claimed uh, it to be. That then gets repeated time and again uh, on Fox News to all the Fox News viewers, to uh, Trump's orbit there. That gets fed back into the White House. He, he sees it. He feels validated by it that Fox News is repeating his untruth, and, and he continues to do it. So I, don't, I think that feedback loop is hugely uh, a, a big part mm -hmm. of this scenario of the president not breaking with this habit of his of, of not telling the truth time and again. David Chalian, thank you. I appreciate sure. it. Now I want to bring in legendary newsman, Mr. Dan Rather, the host of Access TV's The Big Interview. You always laugh when I do that. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that this, you've, you've been doing this for a while, let's say quite some time, but this bothers you greatly. Have you ever seen anything like this? Well, one, of course it bothers me as a citizen. How could it not bother me? And no, neither I nor anyone else has seen anything quite like this, because we need to see this clearly. We begin with that truth is the currency of democracy. Without truth, you don't have an open government, you don't have an informed electorate, you don't have a democracy. You don't have a constitutional republic based on the principles of democracy. You just can't do it. That's central. Now, Donald Trump has been very effective with a certain segment of the population, a surprising to me, and I think to others, a large segment of the population, roughly something over a third running up, maybe up to 40%. I would say with about the previous um, interview that you did with David, that there are some signs that some of his base, women in the suburbs, but hoarding the polls, are beginning to say, we've had enough. We'll see whether it holds through the elections. So just a footnote, bottom of the page. But look, what's happening now, Donald Trump is authoritarian. He wants people to believe that the only truth, the one and only truth, comes from him. Mm -hmm. This is the hallmark historically of authoritarian regimes. And that's when he says, don't believe what you see and read, you know that old story. You compared it to, to Orwell's and, and, and what you wrote. You, you said uh, when he said, don't believe what you see or what you hear, it's, that's not what's happening. You said it's like, it's like 1984. It's dystopian. Well, it is. It's straight out of Orwell. And it, or, Orwell, uh, you know, what he wrote, it, it's practically a shooting script for Donald Trump. I'm, uh, Donald Trump. I'm not suggesting that Donald Trump read it. The evidence is he doesn't read very much. I don't think he's read Orwell. But the point being here, there is a method to this, and the method is to convince people that the only truth is the truth that comes from me, mm -hmm. the ultimate power. I'm the energy of the ultimate power. And he has made some way in getting that. It, it is, as several people have said before me, he is not just attacking the truth. Mm -hmm. He wants to annihilate the truth. He wants to move us completely into the post-truth political era in which there's no such thing as objective facts. He is the only fact. He, 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 he has all the facts. He has all the information. Just listen to him. That's what he's preaching, and that's his presidency will rise or fall on that. I also agree that there is some desperation lately. I do, I do think that the appearance of closing in the Mueller investigation 
some of what's happening with his former counsel, Mr. Cohen, I think this is beginning to tell on him some, mm -hmm. and that he gets more desperate. And more, as he gets more desperate, he takes bigger risks in telling bigger lies mm -hmm. for more often uh, telling lies and telling people, look, don't believe what you read or see anywhere else. Just come to me. I, I have the ultimate truth. I am the way. So I asked David, I said, do people, do his supporters not believe him or um, do they just not care? You say most Americans see through the propaganda. I hope you're right. Why do you say that? Well, first of all, uh, that's my experience. Mm. That I have great confidence in, in, in the American people in the audience long range. Secondly, the polls indicate that. Let's remember that while Donald Trump has a solid base of support, a majority of Americans still indicate uh, that they're very skeptical of him and in many cases can't stand him. Mm. You, um, but th there was, even when Nixon went through what he went through, there were checks and balances in the Congress. But Washington, folks in the Capitol, they're not holding him accountable. Well, first of all, when Richard Nixon went through the widespread criminal conspiracies we call Watergate, there were profiles in courage in Congress, including Republican uh, senators and congressmen who stood up and said, this won't do. Mm -hmm. uh, secondarily, the institutions were holding much better, much more firmly during the Watergate time as a check and balance. For example, both houses of Congress eventually moved against Richard Nixon. The judiciary upheld what the special prosecutors of the time were seeking to have upheld, giving away the tapes. You compare that with today, mm -hmm. uh, the profiles encouraged, particularly among Republicans in the House and Senate so far, have been very, very few and far between. That opens them to charges of being, quote, gutless wonders. Yeah. Did, did, did people believe the media then? Was, was there this distrust of the media as much? No. There was a great deal more trust in the media at the time, partly because there were voices other President Nixon and Vice President Spiro Agnew, who may, was made to resign in uh, disgrace, but nonetheless, that there were all kinds of voices in the Republican Party mm -hmm. who supported the idea of a free and independent press, saying, look, I don't like what the press says, but it's no good attacking them, and we... There was a good deal more trust. And by the way, what the press did during the Watergate time, of course, engendered a great deal of more trust in the press in the later 70s and early 80s. I just hope the system isn't broken when you think about what's happening in Washington and the distrust uh, in the media. And then you see him, you know, the, the administration kicking out reporters or reprimanding them for asking questions. It's, it's, it's terrible. Well, it, it hangs in the balance. And the reason I say that I to be preaching or profound about it, we're in a, a, a battle for the soul of the country. Right. Donald Trump represents one way to proceed, and those who are appalled by what he's doing represent another, some people in between. But make no mistake, all the chips are on the table here. This is a battle for the soul of the country. Will we get back to you think where we can agree on what, you know, the whole thing about Putin I w would and wouldn't, and I, that's what I meant to say. I mean, that, as you said, universal truths. He said what he said, and then he tried to fix it, but... Well, is the question, do I think we can get back to then? Yeah. I don't think we can get back to it during this presidency. I would love to be proven wrong. After this presidency? After this presidency, a lot depends on how it goes in the next few months. Thank you, Mr. Rather. Thank you. Very Appreciate much. your time. I'm always glad to be with you.